Welcome to the Sports Heads NFL Betting Podcast, sponsored by RedZoneSports.bet. Want to know which way to bet in the NFL this weekend? We'll give you our inside tips and all that's hip in American football. I'm Tony Fennell with my co-host John Stone, and we're here to take you through every game this week. All right, in what's been a crazy NFL season and tough to call any game, matey, mm. how did you do last week? <laughs> well, I'm going to say that a lot of people took a bath last week, and I also am squeaky clean, so <laughs> I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> I, I, no, seriously, how many games did you call? Uh, I got four, four winners. Yeah! Four winners? Come uh, on. About, out of a total of about, I think, of 45 or so picks, I got about 25, so. Not bad. Uh, you know, I, I was doing so well. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's get on with it. Then week six, game one, Philadelphia Eagles yeah. at Carolina Panthers. This is the game of the week for me, John. Yep. Cam Newton and Co are on fire. That being said, the Eagles, as I pointed out last week, know how to get it done. And Sunday was no different. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a close one. Who do you see coming out top? And I'm picking Carolina. Yeah, they're giving three at home, a 46 over under. I think those are both about right. Uh, Philadelphia looked Terrific. That was one of my wins yeah. last <laughs> last time against the Cardinals at home. Carson Wentz was great. Four touchdowns, pa- completed passes to eight different receivers. LeGarrette Blunt, their running back, 14 uh, rushes for 74 yards. Their defense was also great. Sacked uh, Carson Palmer twice. He only had 291 yards. That's not that great for him. He's the second leading passer in the league. Uh, one touchdown. Carolina was also very, very good. Uh, Detroit did come back in the fourth quarter, but overall that looked like a real stomping. Uh, Cam Newton again, your boy. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's kicking ass. I gotta, I gotta tell you, he looked, he looked pretty terrific. <laughs> I'm a little scared of them right now. And can you believe it? Four and one. Ouch. 26 to 33, three touchdowns, no interceptions, three sacks. Their rushing game was not there. They're going to have to pick up on that. Jonathan Stewart only had 18 for 21, 28 yards overall for the team. But they did sack Stafford six times, held him to 229 yards and two touchdowns. Injury-wise, the only thing that really is a little outstanding for Philadelphia is Wendell Smallwood, their running back. He's, uh, he's questionable, and I'm not sure he'll play. They would like to have him there to uh, spell LeGarrette Blunt. Yeah. <clears throat> for Carolina, their center is still out. Demetrius Cox, their safety's out. Carolina, their rushing game may be it may have a tough time against Philly's number four rush defense, but Philly's 30th ranked passing defense is going to have a tough time against Carson Wentz. Oh yeah, I mean, against I'm sorry, uh, Cam, Cam Cam Newton. Newton. So I'm going to go with you. I think it's going to be Carolina is going to win this one. Uh, Philadelphia is not going to beat that spread, and I'm going to take the over. Week six, game two, Miami Dolphins at Atlanta Falcons. Cutler must have been listening to our podcast last week, mate, or watching lots of tape. Probably the latter, but hey. <laughs> anyway, a different player in week five. He'll have his hands full, though, against the Falcons. What are you thinking? Well, Atlanta is giving 10.5 at home. I don't think they're thinking he's that great. No. Uh, 47 and a half, that's a pretty good over-under. Uh, they did have a win. They were ugly, but that was my second great victory last week over a depleted Tennessee squad, arguably, obviously. Obviously, uh, held de- t- poor Tennessee to 188 total yards. Sacked Matt Castle six times. Who knew Ouch. he was even still in the league? Uh, their offense was not good, but it got the job done. Ray Ajayi, 25 rushes for 77 yards. Not great, but good enough. Cutler, as you said, one touchdown, one INT, 12 of 26 for 92 yards. Falcons, they had a bye week last week, but good news for them. Julio Jones and Mohamed Sanu will be back to bolster their passing game. And they right need that. They need very that. Very much right now. They're 19th ranked in the league, only five TDs. Uh, running back Devontae Freeman will have a challenge against Miami's number three rushing defense. Uh, as far as injuries are concerned, wide receiver Devontae Parker is out for Miami. Nobody really for uh, Atlanta. Eh, I think Atlanta here, they are home. I think they're going to do much better than they did against Buffalo a couple of weeks ago. A similar team to Miami, although better. I'm going to take Atlanta to win this game. Miami will beat the spread, however. I think that's too high. And I'm going to take the under. Week six, game three. Green Bay Packers and Minnesota Vikings. He just keeps on keeping on. And Aaron Rodgers, for me, honestly, is the most complete quarterback in the game. Mm -hmm. Look, Minnesota, no pushover, obviously. But this guy makes a great player look ordinary. Rodgers is that bloody good. (laughs) I'm going with Green Bay, though. Am I wrong? No. Oh. Uh, No, after watching that Dallas game, I said to my friends, I'm going to go home and watch Lifetime. I feel so depressed. (laughs) (laughs) There's no info on this game yet. Um, Green Bay Packers, what can you say? It's Mr. Rodgers. He's killing everybody. 
three touchdowns, only 221 yards, but game winner, game winning drive in the last minute. That run killed Dallas. Yeah. That rush, that run around the corner that he got. Aaron, here was, here's what it was. Last week I said Green Bay was a little too one dimensional. Well, they were not one dimensional anymore. Running back Aaron Jones, 19 rushes, 125 yards, and a touchdown really helped them solidify their offensive presence against oh, yeah. Dallas. Minnesota has an excellent rushing D, uh, excellent defense, I'm sorry. Number three rush, or number 11 pass. Bradford, I don't know, maybe he's back, maybe he's not. We're not sure yet. Unfortunately for them, running back Dalvin Cook will uh, be uh, is on the IR. He will That will hurt their offense for sure. Uh, running back by committee, Latavius Murray and Jarek McKinnon. Have you heard of them? No. Neither have I. <laughs> <laughs> Neither will anyone else. Uh, Green Bay, Jordy Nelson is questionable. That could be a little bit of a kink in the armor for them, but I don't think it'll be a big deal. Running back Dalvin Cook, as I said, for Minnesota is out. Green Bay, strangely, only 4-2 and two against Minnesota since 2014, as good as they've been. But in this case, I'm going to take Green Bay to win this one. Green Bay, if they're giving more than five, I'm going to say Minnesota will beat that spread. And if the over-under is 45 or more, I'll take the under. Week six, game four, Detroit Lions at New Orleans Saints. Detroit quarterback Stafford got creamed <laughs> in week five. And he had a defense. To be honest with you, that was non-existent. I've got to be honest. Yeah, you're a watching Proper that warrior, game. though. He battled through. You know, you saw that. He got a thigh injury. Mm -hmm. Got through most of the game with it. Breeze will give him a game, though. I'm going for Detroit based on last week's outing. What are you thinking, bro? Uh, Saints are giving three and a half at home, a 51 over-under. That's a little, little narrow in my mm. mind for such a high over-under. But... These are two good indoor turf teams. That means it should be a track meet. I know Detroit has a very good defense. New Orleans defense has been coming up very well as well recently. Uh, yeah, Detroit, <clears throat> a tough home loss to Carolina. Stafford stacked six times. Ouch. No running game. Amir Abdullah had had a good game the day, game before. This time, 10 for 31. No, thank you. No. Did come, they did come back in the fourth quarter, and the rushing defense was very strong, and it remains good. Number nine overall, 74 yards per game. New Orleans had a bye week last week, but they've looked very good in their last two wins, including one over Carolina. Drew Brees, very strong. Five touchdowns in the last two games that they've played. Running game is a question. Mark Ingram right now, 42 and a half yards per game. Uh, injuries wide uh, for Detroit wide receiver Kenny Galloway and running back Dwayne Washington. Uh, for New Orleans, fullback John Kuhn, he is actually a very important part of their uh, offense, so that might be a problem for them. Look, I'm going to say it. Detroit, they're great, but when you go into New Orleans, I'm going to take, if New Orleans is going to continue to play the way been, they've been playing, I'm going to take New Orleans wow. to win. Detroit will not beat the spread, and I'm going to take the under. Week six, game five, New England Patriots at the New York Jets. Now, seriously, this will be a good game to watch. Did I just curse that, by the way? Did I, <laughs> did I, did I, I just blew it, didn't I? All right. Well, the Jets are using probably, probably all of their nine lives, or they've figured out a way to grind out the games. I think it's the latter, to be honest. Mm. The Pats, though, they're on 10 days rest. I know where I see it going. I can see Brady going, uh-huh, okay. <laughs> What are you thinking, mate? Well, New England's giving nine and a half on the road, so I think Vegas knows where it's going, too. Yeah. 47 over under, that's pretty good, although that might be a little high considering the Jets' offense and New England's right now. Yeah. Uh, New England squeaked by with an ugly win against Tampa Bay last week, but Brady was Brady. 30 of 40, 303 yards, a touchdown, three sacks, and one lost fumble. Rushing game was okay. They had a two, com uh, Deion Lewis and Mike Gillisley, their running backs, combined for 105 yards. That gave a little, took a little pressure off. Late scratch, I didn't have this on the last week. Uh, tight end Rob Gronkowski was out. He may be out for this one as well, unfortunately. Mm. Big bugaboo for the Patriots. They've got to stop this, and it's really surprising with such a disciplined team. 12 penalties for 108 yards Ouch. against Tampa Bay. they got to get over that. New York, they survived a trap game in Cleveland. I thought it might be. McCown, good enough. 194 yards, two touchdowns. No running game, though. 18 rushes for 34 yards. Rushing defense then turned around and gave up 33 rushes for 140 yards. One sack, and here's the key to this game for me. One sack for the Jets uh, adds to an anemic seven total for the season. Mm. Injuries, New England, as I said, Gronkowski and running back Rex Burkhead are inactive. Holes in the defense for uh, New York Jets and running back Bilal Powell is questionable. You have to pressure Mr. Brady if you want to beat the Patriots. He doesn't like to be touched, as I always like to joke, but if they can't put pressure on him, they're not going to. And with seven sacks all year, the Jets don't put pressure on people. Nope. So I'm going to go with Mr. Brady and New England to win this game. 
The Jets will beat the spread. That's a little high and insulting, frankly, uh, with their defense. And I'm going to take the under. Week six, game six, San Francisco 49ers at the Washington Redskins. The 49ers suffered another heartbreaker in Indianapolis at week five. I mean, a big one. <laughs> I'd like to say that Hoyer, you know, he's not as bad as the stats say he is, but look, with the Redskins sitting at 2-2, two and two, this is a big game for both of these boys. My money's on Sam Fran, though, matey. Am I wrong? Probably. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, but I learned last week not to bet on San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, Washington's giving 10 at home, that's fair. 46 and a half over under, that's also fair. Yeah, I mean, Hoyer right now is number 13 in yards in the league, believe it or not, considering how bad their offense is. Uh, uh, he looked good against uh, Indianapolis, 29-46, 353 yards and two touchdowns against no rushing game. Again, running back Carlos Hyde was eight rushes for 11 yards. It's crazy. Yikes. Ten penalties for 77 yards did not help them. Washington, they're coming off a bye week after a tough loss at Kansas City. The D looked good against Kansas City and is number four ranked overall in the league. Cousins, seven touchdowns against one interception. I had to look at that twice. But seven sacks in four games. Running back by committee has them at number 14 in the league, averaging 130 yards per game. For San Fran, many holes on defense. That's not going to help them. Washington is going to miss Josh Norman at uh, cornerback. He's out for four weeks with a rib and lung injury. End of the day, look, this is not going to be a close game, I don't think. I don't think it's a 10-point game, but it's not going to be close. Washington is going to win this game. San Francisco will beat that spread, and I'm going to take the under. Week six, game seven, Chicago Bears at Baltimore Ravens. <laughs> right. Right, as we record this here in New York City, by the way, Chicago are debuting Mitch Trubisky. <laughs> right? Who? All right. Oh, come on. All right. This, you know, obviously, this is the last game of week five. It's the Monday night game against the Vikings. We'll see how that goes. But for week six, my gut's telling me the Chicago matey are taking it, even though Baltimore handed it to Oakland in week five. I'm saying Chicago, John. Are you? Well, Baltimore is giving seven at home. I don't have an over-under yet for this game. Uh, look, if you're right, then the Bears running back. I'm always right. What are you talking about, mate? Are you right? than me, that's for sure. <laughs> running backs Jordan Howard and Tariq Cohen have to perform. If it's Trubisky, I don't know who that guy is, or if it's Mike Glennon. If his he's mom and one. dad do, though. You know that, right? <laughs> well, I hope. <laughs> at least his mom does. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, if they're going to do it, they have to be able to run the ball, and their defense is going to have to play very, very well. Yeah. Ravens, running back up by committee, ran all over Oakland, 39 rushes for oh, 143 yards. Them. Yeah, yeah, they were just, they were, I mean, it was 14 nothing in the first quarter yeah. before you even turned your head around. Flacco was good enough, you know, 19 of 26, 223 yards, 22, 222 yards. <laughs> Rushing defense held uh, Marshawn Lynch to 12 rushes for 43 yards and a touchdown and shut down EJ Emanuel. He's really only going to work if the running game is working. Injuries, two linebackers for Chicago are doubtful. And Baltimore's running back Terrence West, who was doing well, he's questionable. They also have some holes on defense. Chicago is terrible on the road since 2014, 8-18. Eight and 18. I don't think that's going to improve, although I said that last week and I got screwed. So <laughs> I'm going to say, in this case, I'm going with you, Tony. I think the running game is going to work and the defense is going to work. Chicago is going to win this game. <laughs> nice! And they're going to beat the spread, obviously, and I'm going to take the under in a real defensive struggle. Week six, game eight, Cleveland Browns at Houston Texans. Ouch. What out for the season, and so's linebacker Whitney. Merciless. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> the Browns struggle in year out, you know, so I can't see them beating Houston, even with those two huge players out for mm -hmm. Houston. It's Houston for me, John, how about you? Yeah, you, me, and everybody else. Uh, they're giving 10 and a half at home, no over-under yet. Uh, Cleveland Browns, I mean, what can you say? They're another ugly loss to the Jets. I couldn't count how many times they either fumbled or intercepted. He got intercepted. I mean, it was a mess. Yeah. Kaiser got benched eventually, replaced by Kevin Ogan, who did well. 16 of 19, 194 yards and two touchdowns. Decent running back by committee, 33 for 140. Rushing defense shut down the Jets, 18 for 34 only, and uh, held them overall to 202 yards, even though they lost. So I think there's some hope there for Cleveland. Certainly not this year, but maybe down the road. Yeah. Houston, uh, what a horrible loss. Not just that they lost the game, but also losing J.J. Watt Crazy. and Merciless. I mean, that's... That this is a season of injuries, and we'll get to yeah, that at some point. Yes, absolutely. The heart and soul of that defense and much of the team right now is going to be all Deshaun Watson if they're going to get anywhere in this uh, in this year. 
15 of 31, 261 yards, five touchdowns. No interceptions against Kansas City's defense. Running back by committee was decent, 23 for 144, but their defense took a big hit. They also gave up yards to Alex Smith, 324 and three touchdowns, and they gave up yards to Kareem Hunt. I think he had about 101 yards or so. So, yeah, they're going to have some challenges coming down the road. Nobody out for Cleveland. Who cares? They, <laughs> nobody can play anyway. Uh, no, that's not fair. I think they're going to get better by the end of the year. They will win at some point. Houston, of course, J.J. Watt and Whitney Merciless out. Uh, Browns coach Hugh Jackson is 1-20 and 20 <laughs> in the last two years. Uh, to be perfectly frank, folks, he's got to go probably before the end of the year. Houston is going to win this game, clearly. Cleveland will beat that spread. I think it's going to be a tougher game than people think. Uh, if the over-under is 45 or more, I'm taking the under. Week 6, Game 9, Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Arizona Cardinals. Philly batter the Cardinals in Week 5, and you've got a Tampa team that lost against an average New England team. This one's going to be hard to call, I think. What are you thinking, matey? Yeah, uh, two and a half Tampa Bay's giving on the road. That's interesting. 44 and a half over under. I mean, they're no great shakes right now. They are definitely better than Arizona's playing right now. But yeah, they had an ugly loss at home uh, to New England uh, in week five. Previously reliable kicker Nick Folk missing three of four field I mean, who goals. Does, who does that? In a 19-14 loss. And those weren't long field goals. I can think a couple of them were within 35, 40 yards. Yeah. Jameis Winston looking good again. I think he's continuing to progress. Uh, 26 of 46, 334 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. Running back by committee, and this is big for them. R Doug Martin, their running back, was reinstated. He had a, a substance issue. 13 for 74, one touchdown. If they can get that going between him and Jaquiz, Jaquiz Rogers, they should actually be able to give some support, run support to Jameis Winston. Nine penalties for 70 yards, that didn't help them. Yes, Arizona got creamed at Philadelphia. I did call that, yay! <laughs> Carson Palmer, again, this poor guy, man. He's number two in the league, 28 of 44, 291, a touchdown, two sacks only. He usually gets creamed about five or six times. Yeah. No run game, 14 rushes for 31 yards as a team, and their defense got lit up by Wentz. Uh, Carson Wentz, four touchdowns, and the rushing game for Philadelphia, 33 rushes for 122 yards. Injuries, Tampa Bay wide receiver Deshaun Jackson is out. That may hurt them a little bit. Arizona has holes on both lines. Winston is continuing to impress. 333-yard average in the past two weeks, four touchdowns and no interceptions. That's very big for him. Poor Carson Palmer, number two ranked quarterback and no run run support. He's got nothing. Now, I mean, he's got he nothing. has nothing. He's, he's doing it all by himself. He's yeah. a magician. That said, I am going to actually say that Tampa Bay wins this game. I think it'll be Ooh. close. Arizona clearly. Uh, Arizona will not beat the spread, obviously. And I'm going to take the over. Week 6, Game 10, Los Angeles Rams and Jacksonville Jaguars. What about the Jaguars? I mean, I'm being serious. They look like a freight train against the Steelers. By the way, Big Ben looked terrified. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty, quite bizarre, actually. I mean, that's, that's quite a sight. Right. I think with the Rams coming off their loss to the Seahawks, this one might be a tough one to shake. I'm taking Jacksonville. How about you? Yeah, Jacksonville giving two and a half. Are you agreeing with me? Well, I do, actually, oh. uh, because <laughs> I'll tell you why. <laughs> Jacksonville giving two and a half at home, 43 and a half over under. Those are both fine. Yeah, Rams, I mean, come on. They fumble on the goal line. The guy, the guy touches the pylon and then throws it out of bounds. That's yeah. the lost touchdown. Jared Goff could not carry the team. Todd Gurley held to 14 rushes, uh, 14 rushes for 43 yards. Mm. Jared Goff, their quarterback, could not carry that team without a running game. 22 of 47, 288, but two interceptions and no touchdowns. Defense was good, but five turnovers overall is going to kill anybody. So they, they couldn't survive that yeah. against Seattle. Jacksonville, my, again, I've been saying it all year. They, one game they look fantastic. It's Jacksonville and Hyde. One game they look fantastic. One game they look god I mean, god big, awful. big Ben was choking. Who called that game? I, I do not know. Leonard Fournette, their running back, 28 rushes for 181 yards and two touchdowns against the Steelers' defense. And Blake Bortles did exactly what he should, not throw the football. <laughs> 8 of 14, 95 yards, almost 100. Don't have him on your fantasy team. No touchdowns, one interceptions, and two sacks. Uh, somebody pointed this 
this out while we were watching the game. He had not and did not throw a pass from the middle of the third quarter on. Wow. They didn't really need to. They were trying to chew up the clock, but that was still kind of funny. Defense was stifling. Five interceptions on Roethlisberger. I don't know how many they have. I think they're over 10 at least this year. With that, I think they're all close to 15. That's amazing. And they held Le'Veon Bell to 47 yards on 15 rushes. And that's huge. That's very, again, I think a lot of teams you're starting to see now, if the running game is not working, it really takes an extraordinary quarterback to be able to Is it because they've figured uh, Le'Veon Bell out, or is it just that they, they know how to do this? I, I think it's a little of both. I mean, you wouldn't just say, oh, let's let Ben Roethlisberger beat us, because in the past he's been able to. Yeah. But I think now he's a little older, a little less sure of himself, yeah. and I think you're starting to see uh, that that translate into the onto the field. Uh, Rams are not going to have a safety LaMarcus Joyner. Jacksonville has some holes, but nothing major. If the Rams rushing D is not good, and it's not, uh, 133 yards uh, per game average this year, look for Jacksonville to run again. I think that's their formula for the rest of the year. So I'm going to take Jacksonville to win this game. Rams are not going to beat that spread, obviously, and I'm going to take the under. Week six, game 11, Pittsburgh Steelers at Kansas City Chiefs. We just spoke about the Steelers, <laughs> you know. I, I, week five, I mean, Big Ben had two pick sixes. Mm. And for him, that's unheard of, you know. Yeah. And I think you're right, the cracks are starting to appear. He's about 150 years old and <laughs> 700 pounds, you know. He's a big boy. But, you know, I mean, look, with Kareem Hunt in the mix for Sunday's game, I can only see it going one way. Kansas, that's your lot. How about you, John? Yeah, I'm a little surprised they're only giving three at home. That's a surprise the way Pittsburgh has been playing recently. Steelers looked, as we just talked about, they looked awful against Jacksonville. Don't need to go back into that again. Yeah, two pick sixes are going to kill anybody. Yeah. And they also, <laughs> something I didn't mention before, Pittsburgh gave up 231 overall rushing yards. Oh. Kareem Hunt, did you hear that? <laughs> Lick your chops. Oh, he's ready to go. Kansas City, Alex Smith, what can you say? I mean, he just keeps going. Kareem going. I think they're the best one-two combo in the NFL right now. Totally. Smith, 29 of 37, 324 yards, three touchdowns and no INTs. Hunt, 29 uh, rushes for 107 yards. The D did give up five touchdowns to Deshaun Watson, Houston's quarterback, very talented guy, and 144 rushing yards. So there is some hope, but I'm not sure. Uh, Pittsburgh, they're not going to have linebacker James Harrison. Travis Kelsey, the tight end for Kansas City, is questionable. That could be an issue. They love throwing to him. Yes. Kansas City is running on all cylinders right now. They do have a weak defense, number 29 overall, 27 at the pass, but they do have 14 sacks, so watch out, Big Ben. Uh, that said, Kansas City is going to win this game. They will beat that spread, and I'm going to give them the over. Week 6, Game 12, Los Angeles Chargers at Oakland Raiders. Now... <laughs> was, it, was it that the New York Giants' defense was so bad, or are the Chargers the new powerhouse in the NFL? <laughs> They rolled over Manning and the New York Giants. I mean, I was embarrassed to watch it, to be honest. Yeah. As for the Raiders, they're two and three, and they need to recover from week five's beat down from the Ravens. I think Rivers and Co. are going to bring it, and I'm going with the Chargers. What about you, John? Yeah, uh, no numbers for this game yet, but we'll see what uh, comes down the line. Los Angeles, yeah, gritty win over the G-Men in New York. Phillip Rivers looked good again. Three touchdowns, 258 yards, no INTs, 21 for 44. And very important for them, they got running back Melvin Gordon back, 20 rushes for 105 yards. That gives them balance. Ooh. That's very important for that team. Defense sacked Manning five times. I think everyone sacks Manning five yeah. times. They just give them. Uh, rushing defense did give up 152 yards and a touchdown to Giants' terrible rushing game, but we'll see if that can survive, work its way through for the Oakland Raiders. Marshawn Lynch, you might want to take an ear for that. <clears throat> Without Derek Carr for the Raiders, no way. They're too predictable. E.J. Manuel is a good guy and a good quarterback when he has a very strong rushing game. If he doesn't, he's not going to win this game for you. 13-26, 159 yards and one touchdown against the Ravens. Marshawn Lynch had tough sledding against the stack box. 12 rushes for 43 yards and a touchdown. Their rushing defense also gave up 143 yards and two TDs. Ouch. So they're not hitting on any cylinders right now. Injuries, uh, Chargers have running back Brandon Oliver and wide receiver Mike Williams. And Oakland, they do have holes on defense. And of course, Derek Carr and their running back, DeAndre Washington, are also out. Oakland is going fast, uh, going south fast, and I think the Chargers are not going to help them rebound. No. Nope. I'm going to say the Chargers will win this game. If Oakland is giving points, I'm not going to take them, and I will take the under. All right, week six, game 13, New York Giants at Denver Broncos. Are you sitting comfortably, John? <laughs> 
The Giants, whose worst 16 game record in franchise history is 3, 12, and 1 in 1983. By the way, that was Bill Parcells' first season as head coach. And as of now, I can see the G Man doing much worse than that. I've got to be honest. Shocking injury reports from Sunday's game as well for the Giants. Trevor Simeon and co are at 3 and 1. I don't see him going 3 and 2. Help me make some sense of this ongoing mess, John! I say Denver. Tell me I'm wrong. Well, uh, no, you're not wrong. Uh, 3 12 and 1 in 83 uh, is. Is this the built, Sunday night game, by the way? Uh, unfortunately for NBC, ah. it is. Um, 3 12 and 1 in 83 for Bill Parcells first season. McAdoo is not Parcells, so he may not even get that far no. to have another chance at another season. Denver giving 10 and a half at home. That's fair, believe it or not. 41 over under, that's also fair. I don't think a lot of points are going to be scored in this game. Giants, uh, what a terrible season they're having, and it's even worse now. Odell Beckham is out with a broken ankle. They lost, I, mean, I think, their entire receiver core in that game against the Chargers. Lone bright spot was running back by committee, going 25 for 152 yards and a touchdown, led by my new favorite name in the NFL, Orleans Dark. Wow, you know what, though? Great touchdown, that by the boy. That was a great touchdown for him, and that was a little bit of ray of sunshine for them in a very dark season. <laughs> Eli Manning was okay, 21 to 36, 225 and two touchdowns and an interception, but five sacks killed the momentum several times. If I can just interject, I actually saw this morning on Twitter that Tyrell Owens has asked for a job as a wide receiver. And I tell you what, they could do worse than that. Hey, if you're going for him, why don't you go to Jerry Rice and Steve Largent too? I mean, they can all just put on leather helmets and run around in the mud. Loving it. <laughs> Denver, they had a bye week last week. They held on for a 16-10 win over Oakland two weeks ago. They held Oakland's offense in check the whole game. Not that hard to do. Trevor Simeon was fine. 16 for 26, 179 yards and a touchdown. Four sacks, though. C.J. Anderson, their running back, got 95 yards on 20 rushes. Running back by committee, got 32 by, uh, for 143 overall. Giants, injuries, where to begin? Even my favorite guy, Arleans Dacqua, <laughs> is questionable, but Brandon Marshall and Sterling Shepard are also questionable. That's much more concerning, and of course, Beckham is out. Denver, no injuries to speak of. G-Men, may I introduce you to Owen oh, Six? Oh, come on, say it ain't so. <laughs> Denver is going to win this game. I think the G-Men might beat the spread. I just think this is going to be a very tough, ugly defensive game, and I think it's going to be the under. Week 6, game 14. This is the Monday night game, the last game of the week. John, last Sunday, the Colts retired Peyton Manning's jersey. They also retired his style of play for the day, and they went with the old ball control and patience approach, as opposed to Peyton's big arm, of course. It worked. They got the win. As for the Titans, their offense, you know, they struggled to find consistency this year, and I can't see that changing. I'm going to have to take the Colts on this. What are you thinking? Yeah, no numbers on this game yet. It's too far out. Uh, Indianapolis, they got their second win of the season. They're like the Jets. I know. What is that? Uh, in OT, uh, OT against the 49ers, thank Mr. Vinatieri. He's still in the league and still kicking that damn ball. Uh, quarterback Jacoby Brissett was okay. 22-34, 314 yards. No, uh, no touchdowns, but an interception and four sacks. Running back by committee again, carried the day. 35, pardon the expression, 35 for 159 yards and two touchdowns. The defense gave Gave up, of course, a lot of yards to Brian Hoyer, the quarterback for San Francisco, but held their rushers to 66 yards on 22 carries. Marcus Mariota, if you don't have him, Tennessee, you're going to look very beatable and very predictable. Matt Castle, wow, he was still in the league. He, he came back uh, against the Miami pass defense, 21 of 32, 141 yards in the touchdown, but he was six sacked. Six times. I mean, it, yikes. It, that's brutal. Yeah, that's brutal. Running back by committee was not effective. 20 rushes for 69 yards. Their D was uh, respectable. They did hold Ajayi to 77 yards and no touchdowns, but they're going to have to do something about their offense, otherwise they are doomed. Injuries on offense of, uh, on the offensive line for Indianapolis, and Andrew Luck, of course, is still MIA. Marcus Mariota is still out for Tennessee, and that's all you got to say about that. Both teams are really not going anywhere right now, but Tennessee is going much further, further backward than Indianapolis. I'm actually going to take Indy in this one. Woo. If Tennessee is giving points, obviously no. And if the over-under is 45, I'm taking the under. All right, that wraps up this week. See you guys, same time, same place, next week.